Hey, the Gadget Man here with nothing but gadgets. And today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough guide for the how to set up and use the settings on the Aitman H55 trail camera. So, three, two, one, let's get at it. Let's open this thing up and get to it. The first thing we got to do is obviously turn it on. So let's go to the test mode. That's where we're going to do the settings here. Okay. Let me zoom the camera in just a little bit here so we can uh, get a little better view here. Okay. So when the camera first starts off, all right, it's going to be give you the language options. Um, I speak English. There's a bunch of other languages here. I'll just scroll through them. If you recognize them, they're for you. Okay, right there, it's English, so that's what I uh, choose. We're gonna use this little arrow, crooked arrow thing. I love how the buttons light light up on this, so we're gonna set the time and the date. So, it's 2021, press enter, go to the next one. It is June. Press enter, go to the next one. I think it's the 9th. Yes, June 9th. Okay. There we go. The time right now is 2100 hours and 33 minutes. Press that. All right, time set. Okay, so it's asking for a memory card. All right, so I've got a Samsung Evo Select 32 gigabyte card here. It's gonna go over here in the side of the camera. Let me turn it back on. Okay, so it turned it off when I put the SD card in. Let's let it boot up. This is the menu. All right, mode. Mode is what the camera is going to do. So we have three options. We have photo, video, or photo, video. I always like to shoot photos and videos, so I'm going to set it to that option. Now, let's go down here. Photo resolution. Okay, so we have all the way up to, okay, so two megapixels is the smallest, and then we go up from there all the way up to 20 megapixels. So let's choose that. I'm going to shoot everything at top resolution photo series press that okay we can do one photo two photos or three photos let's do three photos okay video resolution we have 1080p 27p and 480p let's leave it in 1080p go down video length it's set to 10 seconds that's actually a good length but let's see what it offers here Okay, so offers from five seconds to a total of five minutes. So that's the longest video you can take with it. All right, we're going to go to 10 seconds and leave it there. Cycle storage. This is going to be basically going to be loop storage. Um, if you want, the, can you to the, the camera to continue taking videos and pictures once the memory card is full, um, then you can turn this on. And then it will start overriding the oldest files, okay? If you don't want it to do that, don't turn that on. Okay, PR interval, okay? This is how long um, the PR is basically this sensor right here. And then when it becomes active, whenever it senses movement, it's going to turn the camera on and take pictures. So the interval is basically the control of how long it is before this becomes active. So you can have it set. Let's see what it offers here. Okay, so let's see. We've got it for 30 seconds here. Let's, it's going by second. Let's see, go down to, we got 60 minutes, five seconds. So the shortest you can have the interval is five seconds and the longest is 60 minutes. Okay, so I actually like about a 10 minute interval. So I'm going to run it down to 10. The closer the interval, the more pictures you're going to have, the further apart, 
the less pictures. 10 minutes is a for wildlife recording. That's a pretty good interval. Uh, so let's go ahead and select that. Now let's go down one more and let's see what else we got. PRI sensitivity. That's how sensitive that is. Let's see what they've got for us. They've got middle, high, and low. I always start out in high, and if I the camera's picking up too much, uh, too many motions of non-animal or of persons like trees and bushes, and taking too many pictures, I move it down to medium or low, depending on the scenario. So I always start in high. So let's go down. Okay, target re recording time. Now, if for some reason you only want the camera to work during certain times of the day, let's say from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning, um, then you can actually turn this on and you can set the actual time that the camera starts working and the time the camera stops working. So you see you got a start time and an end time. Okay, I am not going to use that setting, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to hold on a sec, go back. And I'm going to turn that off. I want it to record 24 hours a day. Time lapse. Now, if you want to shoot a time lapse recording of just basically like, you know, time lapse, where it takes a picture every minute or every 30 seconds or every 10 minutes, depending on how smooth you want the time lapse, you can set the time lapse up and uh, you just turn it on and then you tell it how far in between the, the pictures that you want it set. It's come set to 30 seconds. That's a pretty standard time lapse. You could set it to lower or higher, like one hour apart. Um, say you wanted to take a one year time lapse of something and you set, uh, you know, 24 pictures a day, you could set it to one hour apart. Okay. I am not going to use that function. So I'm going to go here and turn it off. Uh, one quick note is if you do turn time lapse on, that deactivates the sensor and it will no longer pick up motion. It will just take a picture whenever. Uh, the time the schedule time is okay um language we've already gone through language uh, time and date we've already set the time and date serial number this is basically to name the camera i don't know why they call it serial number but if you want to give your camera a name that will be burned onto the actual image that it takes and so that you know which camera took which which picture say you had five of these and they were all the same you could give each one a name and then you would know which one of them took the picture um, so that's pretty simple. You can turn it on and then you give your camera a name and you basically you can use four numbers or you can use uh, alphabetic numbers like ABCD. OK, we're not using that. So we're going back and we're going to turn that off. OK. Temp unit. This is going to be uh, you can set it to Fahrenheit or Celsius. I am in the United States, so we use Fahrenheit here. But if you are in any other country uh, that uses Celsius, you could s select Celsius. OK. All right. But we're using Fahrenheit. OK, let's go to the beep sound. Whenever not you hear me hitting the buttons, you hear a little beep sound. If you want to turn that off, you can turn it off and then there won't be any beep sound. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it on uh, so you can hear that I am actually pushing the buttons. OK. Audio recording. So it has an onboard microphone. Um, if you want to record sound, turn that on. Okay. Stamp. This is going to be if you want the time and the date burned onto the image, permanently on the image that it takes. I always like to leave that on, but you can set it to time and date, um, or you can set it to, you know, the time, date, and logo. You can set it to time and date, just date or off. I'm going to set to... Um, let's leave logo, the logo on there. That way we know what camera took this. Okay. Password protection. Now, this is one I recently had a, a viewer on the uh, YouTube channel that actually forgot their password and they were in quite a pickle. So let me explain to you. Um, if you want to put a password on here and lock this with a password, you can enable it right there and then you can choose a password. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that because there really is no function to it. It sounds like a neat idea, but is not going to keep people from stealing your camera. It is only going to keep them from accessing the menu. And if you forget your password, there is no reset option. There's no way to get around it. I mean, sure, somebody could crack the case open and probably hack the motherboard directly, but they provide no mechanical means built into the system to, to recover from a lost password. The reason they do that is because it is intended 
to discourage thieves from stealing cameras. Once they see it's password protected, they know they're never going to be able to access the menu so they can take the camera, but then it's pretty much useless to them because they can no longer access the menu. So it is a discouragement to thievery, but it does not prevent thievery. Okay, format memory card. Okay, so I put a new memory card in, and, and it's always a great idea to format the memory card in the camera to get the best formatting that's compatible with the camera. So we're going to format it. Okay. And it's formatted. Okay, factory settings. If you want to reset the camera back to the original settings, just like it was when I first started this video, then you can use that function. We don't need to do that because I've already made the set settings. And so here's the version. It tells you what the version is. If you have trouble with the camera and contact the manufacturer, they will probably ask you for the version and they may provide an updated firmware version uh, for you to update if this one is old and out of dated. So um, we're going to just get that. And now we're back to mode. So there's all the settings on the camera. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, Please like, subscribe, and comment. Until next time, this is the Gadget Man saying, I'll see you later.